What does a snowstorm and a Howard Johnson Motel have to do with the origins of Jim Henson's The Dark Crystal script? That is what we'll be diving into today on The Dark Crystal Conjunction. Well howdy y'all and welcome to The Dark Crystal Conjunction, your YouTube space to nerd out about all things The Dark Crystal. Just last night I got to see the Fathom Events Dark Crystal showing in 4K and it was beautiful. Glorious seeing it on the big screen, plus in 4K, you get to see a lot more of that artisanship and the detail that was put into the movie. Loved it. But anyways, before the movie, they had some trivia stills, and I thought that that would make some great content for the channel. Especially since last time I had like an hour plus video for my first one, I thought I'd do a couple of shorter ones. So we can kind of get a steady stream of Dark Crystal content on here. So today we are going to do just that and look at one of these stills. It reads as follows. Jim Henson developed the first story outline for The Dark Crystal in a Howard Johnson's motel near Kennedy Airport during a snowstorm in 1978. Now this was already years after the world and ideas for the movie were being developed. All that was created for the actual story. As the trivia still said, Jim Henson started outlining the story during the snowstorm. To fill that in some more, check out how thedarkcrystal.com puts it. It reads, February 6th, 1978. Jim and Cheryl are snowed in at the Howard Johnson's at Kennedy International Airport. He writes the basic story of the Dark Crystal. And here's a clip from a recent interview where Jim Henson's daughter, Cheryl Henson, explains this day in more detail. And I'm Cheryl Henson, and I'm one of Jim Henson's five children, and I had the pleasure of working on the Dark Crystal when I was a teenager. One of the things that you talk about <laughs> is the blizzard where you and your father were stranded at Kennedy Airport in 1978, and he actually did some work on the Dark Crystal. Can you talk a little bit about that? I know that it's 1978 because my father had a 1977 BMW. Oh, okay. And we drove to the airport in that BMW, and I'll never forget that drive because the blizzard was such a white-out blizzard wow. that it was really like driving through um, uh, a, a completely other world. Mm. And I bring that up because I think that, that the otherworldly quality of being in a total blizzard is almost like a blank piece of paper. Mm. It, the entire world goes white. Mm -hmm. We actually wound up being stranded for 72 hours. Wow. There we were without much to do. And you have to remember this is before the internet. Mm. This is before um, email and when you're stranded and you're not expected to be there for 72 hours you have to find stuff to do mm -hmm. and my dad had been thinking about this production for a long time he had already gotten Brian Froud started designing characters and working with some people in the workshop and this is one of the few films that was actually um, they started designing the world before they wrote the script right. before they even had any idea what the full what the what the, the bo story what the story was right. going to be that it was world driven and design driven before it was character and plot driven. So having suddenly having some special time, some isolated time. When some unexpected could, time. Unexpectedly free time mm -hmm. to get to just focus on this production was such a luxury. And uh, he really took advantage of it and uh, wrote a lot. In Jim Henson's journal, also known as the Red Book, Jim Henson's entry says, try to fly to London, Snowden with Cheryl at Howard Johnson at Kennedy Airport. Did outline for Dark Crystal, just called The Crystal. Concept of Skeksis, Aruz, etc. There's an accompanying book that goes along with that, and in it, Cheryl Henson describes this time with her dad. She writes, quote, The international success of The Muppet Show gave my father the opportunity to realize projects that he had only dreamed of. In 1978, he was busier than he had ever been, flying between London, Los Angeles, and New York. He often doodled in notepads, getting his ideas on paper so he could pick them up later. That February, I was traveling with him to London when the blizzard of 78 hit New York. What had promised to be one of the fastest trips across the ocean in the new Concorde became a 72-hour exercise in patience and imagination. It took more than three hours to be bused from Kennedy Airport to the Howard Johnson's Hotel, just a few miles away. There we settled in with hundreds of other stranded travelers to wait out the storm. During the blizzard, the world appeared to be one enormous blank white slate. Before cell phones and laptop computers, being stranded by a snowstorm meant quiet time, time to imagine new worlds and their inhabitants. My father filled pages with ideas and musings. By the time we reached London, he had an outline for what was to become the Dark Crystal. It took five more years and many extraordinary artists to make those ideas into the film. 
but the germ was doodled down then. End quote. Soon after that, in February 11th, 1978, the typed version of Jim Henson's outline is completed, and eventually David O'Dell will get involved to help with the screenwriting, or rather to do the screenwriting, and he will complete his first treatment based on Jim's outlines, Mithra and the Crystal, in November of 1978. So there you have it, our first trivia kind of looked at, first movie trivia. Please let me know if you have any other info about this particular movie trivia, or if you have any other ideas for future trivia, or whatever kind of videos you want to see, asking questions about the movie, stuff from the comics, media, and whatnot. It is a, uh, we're starting a golden age, I think, of the Dark Crystal. So lots more content to come, and let's uh, look at it together. Until then, do all the YouTube things, and don't forget. It's